Good evening and welcome to this live broadcast. My name is Eddie Lane. I'm your host and of course I have with me in studio this evening Mr. Joe Hamilton. Joe, welcome to this discussion. Thank you very much for having me here, Eddie. And of course together, you know, a lot of misinformation has been um, peddling over the past few days, especially uh, following the ruling of the Caribbean Court of Justice with regards to the no confidence motion and um, the unilateral appointment of the chairman of GCOM. And together, myself and Joe, uh, we're going to look to set the record straight in terms of uh, debunking uh, all the lies and misinformation being peddled and, of course, give you um, a perspective as, as it regards the position of the People's Progressive Party um, with regards to preparations for the elections as well as the whole issue of um, updating the list of electors. Joe, I know you, you, you've been watching keenly the, the failed attempt at a protest today by the AP and UAFC. Um, you know, the impression that we had all along is that they had this big mobilization to go out there with a large number of people, um, talking about young people being disenfranchised and so forth. Uh, one would have expected a lot of young people out there today, but um, I would allow you to, to, to um, give your views first and foremost on what transpired today outside of GCOM. Eddie, yeah, um, you know that uh, some time ago, and even up to last, uh, this week sometime, I, I challenged the AP and UAFC to, in any village, in any ward in Georgetown, to bring forth a dozen persons who are unregistered. And that is yet to happen. Again, I'm, I'm saying to the AP and new AFC. Um, if you look at the protest today, uh, this was a protest that was mobilized across the country according to the PNC, AP and new AFC. Uh, we got pictures out of New Amsterdam and we saw about eight persons in front of the GCOM office. Eight um, persons that were nowhere near to being youth. We had pictures coming out of Madhya. You had a dozen stragglers screaming on the thoroughfare, blocking up the traffic. Linden, you had about two dozen green shirts standing in front of the GCOM office at Linden. And Georgetown, uh, in the center of the city, you had about 100 persons. Uh, what was shocking when I looked at what transpired in Georgetown, and I posted a comment that it was shocking that among less than 100 persons, you had so many ignoramuses in that crowd. <laughs> it was so shocking. And ignoramus is at all the different levels in the government strata also, and I'll get to that in a minute. Let me give some examples. Uh, one of the journalists asking a, guy, a man, no way young, at least he's not as young as Edward Lane. But the question is asked of him, what are you doing here, what are you protesting for? He didn't know. <laughs> he said he just joined the guys them out here. That's the first thing he didn't know. He just, I suspect somebody said maybe he heard that they were having good cook up and swank. <laughs> so he just showed up to ensure that he could participate in that activity, not to pick it the next exercise. You had a young man, one of the uh, sprinkling, who then Chabral asked him, a couple of questions and he could not properly respond. He didn't even know that registration is done when people are 14 years old. He thought you registered at 18. I'm showing you all the ignorance that is happening out there. And then you had the high paying minister of state. Ignorance to the maximum. And what is shameful, what is alarming, is these are the type of people that are representing this country. These are the type of people who are sitting down with diplomats and sitting down with people 
to have a conversation about this country. And this woman is saying that CCJ cannot direct anything in this country because we are an independent country. I mean, we ratified, we signed on to, to in 2005. Uh, the minister is ignorant of that fact. She don't even know that, that we are a signatory and we are one of the parties among just a sprinkling of CARICOM countries that are members of the Caribbean Court of Justice. And in our case, since 2005. So she is saying that they have no jurisdiction over us, even though we are signatories to the CCJ framework. The minister is saying CCJ can't direct us here. This is an independent country. And uh, we will not be governed or nothing. Even, it's just said, even the consequential orders. Yeah, the CCJ can't direct. That, it, that will be forthcoming on side, the CCJ can't direct. Then you have the Minister of Foreign Affairs. I mean, I mean we're in bad shape. Chabral is asking her about the same issues. And he's seeking to find from her as Minister of Foreign Affairs, what type of conversations you've been having with the diplomatic community. You know what are the positions of the leader of the opposition on all the matters. Could you say what discussion on behalf of the government you're having with the diplomatic community? Our response was, this issue here is an issue about our so sovereignty. You know? Uh, the issue about the list is the issue about our, our sovereignty. And this is the woman who represents <laughs> us, you know. And, you know, in the time of all the upheavals, in the time of when we have Venezuela in crisis, we have to deal with the border question and so, you'd want to think that one of the busiest ministers would be the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Foreign Affairs. But the Minister of Foreign Affairs, she has time to come into a picket line uh, to scream and holler about things that she really don't even know about. And now I'm told they have shifted their argument. They are saying now that why you need house house registration? Because the list has expired. <laughs> what? The ignorance is so pathetic because let us even agree that the list has expired. What has expired is the official list of electors, not the National Register of Residents. But, 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 but before we go over to that, Joe, because I think that is one of the big areas that we have to tackle, because I think people need to have a better understanding. I want to take you back to the protest today and some of the comments uh, that were made. And a couple of things in my personal observation. One. Um, I may have a little bit of a different view from you with regards to the ignorance of, 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 of these ministers and those out there. I think it could very well be a coordinated effort to deliberately mislead people. Because if a young man is out there protesting and don't know that you're registered at the age of 14, whether um, under the continuous registration uh, process, it means he's being fed information that is inaccurate. And that is what this government want, uh, I think, want the people to believe that house-to-house -house registration is the only way you can get onto the list. Um, as well as the, the statements by the minister saying that, you know, the CCJ cannot direct us and tell us what to do and so forth. Um, it may be ignorance, but it also may be a case where, again, that is the kind of misinformation they want to feed to people so that... Guyanese will somehow believe that the CCJ is just there for cosmetic Eddie, Eddie, purposes. I think, I think I hear you, but I think you're ascribing intellect to people. <laughs> well, who really, you have a point. <laughs> who, you're ascribing intellect to these people, you know. You're ascribing learning to these people. My interaction with these people yeah, at the level of the parliament is that most of them are dumb people. I I'm serious. Very dumb. Dumb in the sense of governance. 
Uh, I, I'm not questioning whatever profession they might have. They might be very uh, proficient in their profession. I'm talking about politics and governance and running a government. I have interacted with a lot of these ministers, most of them, if not all of them, at the level of the parliament. And I can say to you, when you hear their arguments, when you're... So don't ascribe, I'm saying to you, don't ascribe <laughs> intellect. No ascribe well, learning. Of policies, uh, no well, ascribe <laughs> understanding to these people. You, you, where you you will try to make them smart, <laughs> or think they smart, or people listening would want to say, okay, these people got some smartness. It is not that. It is ignorance at the highest, and that is frightening because it is not ordinary people by the border market. These are people who represent this country at some of the IS4 internationally. These are people, when people come here, uh, they sit with them to discuss Guyana and the future of Guyana. And so it is a serious matter, as laughable as it is, it is a serious matter. Then you are James Bond. He is a lawyer. And he is telling the journalists then that the government is prepared to go to the court to challenge GCOM. You know, I mean, if they fail to institute house to house registration. The first point how come a lawyer don't even understand? You can't go and challenge nothing at the court that is not in the law. You understand? House to house registration is not in the law, no place in none of the acts that deals with elections, right? Continuous registration is in the act. Claims and objections is in the act. Not the house to house registration. And what, what people don't seem to understand, Eddie, is that before the character price formula and before the new construct of elections commissions, what used to happen in times gone by, and you're a young man, you wouldn't know that, that it is at elections time they used to do registration. You understand me? From 92 coming to now, it, the attempt was to get away from that. The attempt was to create a register of all persons who are 14 years of age and to ensure that you, you, you create a database for elections purposes. People confuse registration in large measure has nothing to do with elections outside of elections. Registration, and, and I repeat that, national registration has nothing to do with elections unless there is an election. So you don't register, and, and I think that is the confusion out there. Where people think you are registering for the purposes of elections and voting. That is not so. Before the NRR, that is how the function was. When all of these matters, they, it was under the Ministry of Home Affairs. The independent elections commissions allowed for merging of the two things. Where you have the national register that is a year round activity. And that is the reason why they do continuous registration. registration. Because it is not, the registration, as I said, is not for the purposes of elections. Elections is a subset of the registration. People got it backwards. They think that the registration is a subset of elections. That's not so. It is registration. So the registration is all around. And that is the reason why in the law you allow for two cycles of continuous registration. So all the people who were coming over the age of 14, they would register themselves, allow them to have an ID card. This has nothing at all to do with elections until elections okay. are called. So, 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 and you have this James Bond, who's a lawyer, and, and, and so that is the reason why I started by saying it was so pathetic that in a captured area about a hundred persons, you had so many ignoramuses at all different levels, uh, you had them. And as I said, why it's laughable, 
it is serious because these are not ordinary people. In the case of the ministers, these are people who have governmental authority. These are people who, uh, over the time, they were uh, representing our interests. And even in, the, in, the, in, the, in this construct of where they are illegal, they still sit there and represent our interests. And if you don't know, as the Minister of State, as the, 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 the you know, one time um, I recall uh, somebody, the same minister, asked her what really uh, her functions is. And she says she, she look after everything. And that is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is the problem. You know the problem? She was asked, what is your function? Um, and she says she look after everything. So the problem is <laughs> she's a jack of all trade and she's a master of none. Clearly. And, clearly. clearly. <laughs> and therefore she goes out there and uh, extol or ignorance as my grandmother used to say in front of the public. And you know people looking at that people and I mean I see comments Eddie on the Facebook. Not PVP people. I'm talking about people who are supporters of the government who were shocked that you have this kind of conversation and discourse. And you have James Bond seeking to suggest that they will challenge something in the court that is not legal. <laughs> I mean, how, how, what, what kind of, there's a bicycle lawyer. I mean, there? if you challenge the illegality <laughs> of it. Yeah. Well, it mean, first has to be in the law. It, it, it has to be in the law. And then you act outside of that. That is how the challenge comes. But if nothing, if this thing is not in the law, there's nothing prescribed that say we must have. It's, the law says it allows for continuous registration twice yearly or something like that, every, or every six months or whatever. It is there. So if GCOM fails to do that, you can challenge GCOM and have the court force them to do that. But if House does registration, as we know, is not in the law. You cannot go to the court and have the court force um, GCOM to, do, to do house house registration. You can go to the court to stop GCOM from doing, doing house house registration. And, and that's the yes. Like the, like the court, like the case Anil uh, has put before the court on behalf of, 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 of one citizen. They are attempting to do something that is not legal. That is not covered, covered under no law, no statute. And therefore, you can challenge that. But if it's not there, you can't challenge it. But what I, what I want, I, I, I want us to spend some time, and I think this is important, um, Joe, for people to understand, the fact that from the president right now, seem to be selling the idea to people that, and I think I mentioned this a bit earlier, that house-to-house -house registration is the only means of ensuring every single person of voting age gets the chance to exercise their franchise. But they're saying that, one, if you're not registered, if, if you don't participate, then they're going to take you to court and all sorts of things. But if you must be at home in order for you to be registered, and if you're not at home and they pass through your area, then they're saying if, you're, if you don't re-register, then you're off the list. So if you're not at home and you're not registered, you're taken off the list. So in my personal view, I think any attempt at house-to-house -house registration will de-register more persons than it will register. But that is the attempt. That is, that is the attempt, Eddie. The attempt is to de-register people, not to register people. Um, it might be... And let, let, me, let me rephrase that. It is in some measure to register people who are not qualified to be registered. That's the first point. And the second point is to deregister people. But I say this, Eddie, you know, I was telling some comrades yesterday and some comrades who have um, history in the PNC, uh, operated there as activists, and just reminding them that anytime you see the PNC screaming about a list, they know they're in trouble going to election. 
You follow, you follow 92, 97, 2001, you follow the history. The only time the PNC did not scream about the list and whether it's pure or not was 2015, when they thought they had an opportunity to gain government. And you, you follow it. The only time, from 92 right up to 2011, the PNC before, after, in between, and every way around the election time, there was always a clamor about. So this is not nothing new. Let, let, me, let me say that to people and remind people. It isn't something new. What it must inform you about is that from Granger right down, they know they're in trouble. They know that they cannot win a fair, fair elections. And therefore, this list conversation, I think, I think they're aware that House House registration will not fly. It will not happen. But it is not for pre-election. This all this argument is for post-election. To question the results. And to of question the results of election. So, so I, I just thought people uh, understand that. This game plan, don't get caught up. It is not for now. It is articulated and argued now and protested for now. But it is to put yourself, the supporters, in a frame of mind when they know they will lose, to say to them that we were robbed. And as we told you before, the list was bad. And therefore, we would not accept the results of the election. That is what this is for. And people must not uh, be misled into thinking all this argument. They are aware that, listen to me, uh, they are not that politically naive. They know that this house to house registration will not happen. Secondly, they know that this house to house registration they're talking about, all this foolishness about it can finish October is nonsensical. What they're attempting to do is to lock you into that. You, you see, once you're locked into this starting of house to house registration, you have to go the full gamut. And for young people, this experience, this happened already, is not nothing new. In 1990, we were to have elections in this country. The elections end up have, happening in 1992. Desmond Hoyt end up getting two more years to go in, in the government over the same issue about this. Because you started off trying to create a list, because without a list, you cannot have elections. You have to have a voter's list. To have an election. And so, in 1990, elections was to be held in 1990. Right? By, by year end. Because Burnham died August in 85. And you had an election, I think, the next uh, October or somewhere there, or September. Uh, be, but before the end of the 85. So Hoyt was in power for five years. And elections was to be held in 1990. We had about three or four, Eddie, and this is for young people to understand that this new, this is not a now game plan of the PNC. We had about four elections date that had to be cast aside. And the parliament had to be reconvened again for the extension of time of the parliament. You, you follow? All of that was because of, of, of the list. Now, first thing, Alexander, who is a commissioner, says that they can try to crump house house registration into making it for eight, in eight months. You follow? That, that was the argument early in this year. Now, the same guy is coming to tell you that it can happen by October to have a November election. <laughs> so it's, it, it, it's a farce. But they, once it starts and they lock you into it, <coughs> you have to take it to the, end. to the end. And I'm saying that will take you 
one year into the end. You understand me? So, everything that is playing out, um, they by now must know that there will be no house house registration. And therefore, as I said earlier, all of this clamoring is not pre-elections for pre-election, even though it is happening in pre-election. All of this clamoring is for post-elections activities. And people must watch out and understand that. Because, I mean, the, the government, there the, is people won elections, Eddie, if I recall, less than 4,000 votes or whatever, just, or not even a seat, huh? so to speak. And since then, they've seen what has happened. There is nothing they are doing uh, to impress and to energize what you call the independent types. For that matter, the independent types are so embarrassed that they have distanced themselves from this bunch of people. And those people are some of the most angry people with this government because many of them put their credibility out there because they thought, quote-unquote, that Mr. Granger was some honorable man. But now they have, uh, they have witnessed um, that he's, a, he's not honorable as, as, as he purports to be. And I mean, if they had come, I could have given them free this. I, I advised this country since 2011 for, with, with no cost to it. And Mr. Granger should not go no place near to government. But, uh, I, uh, Joe, the information that you shared just now and, and, and you know, how you explain, it is important. Um, I personally didn't, didn't examine it from that perspective but you came from the belly of the beast. You, you were there sometime in the past. So I think you would have a, a good understanding of how uh, the PNC operates. And, and we see clearly the PNC calling the shots in this. The AFC is dead. The, the AFC is just tagging along. And um, it's really the PNC that is calling the shots. But what I want us to do, because I think a lot of people out there, I've been talking with people and they're confused about the whole issue of house-to-house of, of -house registration. And like you rightly put it, house-to-house -house registration or registration in itself has really nothing to do with elections unless there is an election. Um, but the, the, the argument that they're, they're, and I think you mentioned it, they shift the goalpost now to say the <coughs> list is expired, <Yeah. coughs> giving the impression as though you can just throw the list in a yeah. corner yeah. Yeah. and you start fresh. Yeah. You know, you start a new list. Yeah. Um, but based on the information that we have received and, and you know, from legal um, interpretation of, of what needs to be done to update or revise the list, and I think the, the legal advisor of GCOM would have put it into perspective, into context in, in very simple language, um, is that you just basically need, for the purpose of an election, you need to, to get the names of persons who would have attained the age of 18 by the qualifying date onto the list yes. so they can vote, yeah. to get to move people who may have um, moved from one, a one voting district to another to have their names transferred so that they can vote in the area in which they're, they're living, and to basically remove the names of persons who, who are on seen. the list who, who are dead, who are dead, who are not yeah. supposed to be there. And that is guided by GRO giving you, for that matter, we should not be at a place, if the government system was working, we should not be at a place where we are now questioning how many dead people is on the list. Because you're supposed to have a regime. The regime should be monthly. GRO should send to the Elections Commission the list of names of persons who have been who have deceased, who are dead. And that is how this system is supposed to function. So it is not when elections come, then you're saying, okay, we got some 1,000 um, people who are deceased. They should not be there if the system was, well, I don't know what is happening between the, two, between the two agencies. But I'm saying to you, and I'm speaking from a position of knowing the system, uh, and for your information for people who listen, I helped to build that system in 1991, 92. So I'm very much acquainted with what we were doing, how we were doing it, why we did some things. It's like people say you have people who might have migrated who are still on the list. The law does not allow for you to take a man's name off of the list if he, if he, is, he has migrated. 
He's still Guyanese. He's still a Guyanese. Once his name is on that list, he could come on here and vote. How, how would the law allow for you to expunge a guy in his name who born here when the law allow for a Commonwealth citizen who will live in Guyana for consistently year. for one he can register and vote? And you're taking off a man And you're who taking, was over, born. Uh, taking off a, a person who are, are, are born Guyanese off of a list. And that is the reason why to, to recognizing that people uh, move. Some people go on vacation, they do, my, people are uh, like students on, on, on scholarships. We have thousands of Guyanese students that are studying overseas, hundreds of them. You take the list, they're still living in Guyana. They have people who work out of Guyana, who live in Guyana, but they work out of Guyana. Are you, because you haven't seen them in the house, you haven't taken them out of the list? That cannot be, should not be. But that's the objective. Yes. But the point is, is that in the creation of the system, it allowed for dealing with that. That is the reason why you have now on a voter's list a photo ID. Before 2006, elections lists didn't have a photo ID in it. So I, I'm trying to show you where the system was, it was moving away from House to house registration to updating a list as you go along. And that is the reason why you have fingerprinting as part of the registration process to expunge multiple voting. So Eddie Lane cannot be on that list two times or should not be on the list because you can expunge one Eddie Lane utilizing the finger. Before 2006, there was no fingerprinting at registration. Before 2006, there was no, no facial recognition ID on a voter's list. So all of that was taken into consideration that, yes, the list would have persons who might, might not be available. It's not that they are, they, they, they are illegal on the list. And I see Mr. Granger and uh, Ice Cabal, this foolishness but incorrect entries. There are no incorrect entries on the voter's list or on the national register. All the names that are on the list, they got there via a legal process called registration. So how they're going to be incorrect? <laughs> but it, it is playing with words. So a person who don't understand, who are ignorant of these matters, they would think that you have on this list 200,000 persons who somehow are not supposed to, are be, not there. Supposed to be there. Fictitiously, they were put there. When that is baloney. From Mr. Granger Ryder, because he, he um, brought forth that argument in his presentation that you have 200,000 incorrect entries. Ask him to explain what are incorrect entries. You know, the first thing, incorrect entry is, and, and it's, I mean, it, it's amazing how dumbness is at the highest level. You know what is an incorrect entry? That Eddie Lane is on the list. Instead of EDDI, -E his name is spelled EDDY. Instead of LAYNE, you got LA. That's an incorrect entry. Or your address at Kitty, your name are listed at Duncan Street. That is an incorrect entry. Not an entry of Joseph Hamilton, 124 Aquini Street, born 15 to 11. 15 November 1954, that's, a, that's not, even if I am not here, it is not, an incorrect it's not, it is not an incorrect entry. Then the president says, and again his cabal follow his pattern, the list is corrupted. Again, have no understanding about the term. If you have a database that is corrupt, corrupted, you can do nothing with it. Because what will happen is Hamilton name will be at Eddie Lane address and Eddie Lane name will be at my... That's a, that's a corrupt database. Yes, I, I agree with you. Right? So the, the database, the National Register of Register, is not corrupted. Neither do you have incorrect entries there. You have entries of names that, as I said, they were properly placed there via a process 
a legal process of registration. All of those persons they have in their possession an ID card issued by the Guyana Elections Commission because they were properly registered. So, so Joe, in, in essence, what, what, what the president is saying um, is that either this 200,000 names that he's speaking of mm -hmm. are people who are below the age of 18 or people who died or yeah. multiple entries. Yes. But Mr. Granger in 2015 didn't question no. the list. No. Mr. Granger in 2016 for the local government elections didn't question the list. Mr. Granger in 2018 for the local government elections didn't question the list. But after he saw the results of the 2018 local government elections, the issue of starting to question the list that, that's came the, up. That's the, that's the point that I'm making, that, that 2015 when they, uh, all the signs were suggesting to them they can win, they didn't question the list. You, you know the thing is, Eddie, it is that same list is only a couple tens of thousands of new additions, you know. I mean, the 2015 list, the, the body, and the large percentage of names on the list are persons who were there in 2015. You understand me? Uh, if you follow the registration process for the last two elections, local government elections, I can't remember how many thousands of persons, but the point I'm making, whatever number you have, you understand me? Uh, that is just a minor, a minute subset. The big portion of the list it is what 2015 was, and they didn't question it, yet, right? The, the important thing is that some people are so ignorant that they don't even understand you cannot properly speak about the list of electors on, or, okay, what they're doing is when they say you have so much 100,000 people on the list, they're talking about the National Register. Yes, the National Register would have tens of thousands more persons on, on it than those the, that will be on the official list, list of electors. electors yeah. Because you will have <laughs> tens of thousands of people under the age of 18. So, so I, I'm showing you the ignorance. I, and I shiver at times when I see so many persons who are in government, who are people who are supposed to be influential, when they speak about this matter. They have no background, no understanding about this. They're just utter trash that they're hearing. It's just, it's just, you know, they hear this and they just speak. It's like people say, Granger says, you have 200,000 incorrect entries. A simple can write a letter repeating the same nonsense. <laughs> the same foolishness. When, in fact, they can't show, there, there are no names on the list that should not be there. In, in, what I mean should not be there because they were illegally put, put there. there. That is the point. Even the deceased persons who should be expunged, they are there because they were put there legally when they were alive. So, so that, that is the point. So yes, you, there, sometimes even Alexander and, 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 you know, Alexander and Corby, and they know better. I'm telling you. I know they know better. When you hear they speak, you don't know which list they're talking about. And that is deliberate. Because Alexander say the list has 600 and something thousand persons. First thing he has to say, which list you're talking about? Because yes, the NRR is allowed to have 600 and something thousand persons. It is when we come to election time when you have a qualifying date, the list of electors will be different. Less than. It will always be less than the registered. Uh, so you have the, to minus the people below you 18. You have to minus all the people below 18. And so um, many of these guys, I mean, I, I'm saying I'm the two commissioners, and I, I, I know they're very silent in the last uh, week or so. Um, but they started this conversation in large measure, and they were the ones that feed it, feed it in into the PNC system. And the president, uh, without any knowledge of the matter, you know, 
he just come out there and he, he speaks and uh, about um, he won the credible list and the only way he could get it is by house to house registration. When, when the, the law does not allow for it, first thing. Second point is, coming out of the, the, the Permanent Elections Commission, it was to allow for where you have an updated national register that you can create out of it, at elections time, an official list of electors. And for people who are young, you have to understand that is the reason why a full-time elections commission was created again. Before, election, before 2001, Eddie, the Elections Commission died just, I think, as a month or two months after elections. So, in 92, the Collins Commission, I, I work as a technician there. After elections, it's like two months after that commission came to an end. And therefore, now, when the next election was coming, you have to now create again a new commission. A new commission. And therefore, that, the point is, everyone understood it wasn't sustainable, and that's what was creating uh, problems in large. Right? So what you determine, the body politic determined, that you will create a permanent elections commission, permanent commissioners, a chairman who is full-time, who should not have any other job. All of that went into the law. And you have a technical staff that is working year-round. And again, people talk about the, the 90 days election should be held after no confidence motion. That 90 days didn't fall from the sky. That 90 days is in the Constitution based on advice from the Elections Commission. It is the Elections Commission who said that because we have put all of this framework in place, we will be in a position at any time to hold an elections in three months because we don't have to go and register people like we used to do years ago where you're going to do registration, house house registration. We have a list. And all we do is go out there, we, we do claims and objections, allow for people to come on the list who, for whatever reason, did not allow themselves to register, expunge names, uh, put people in their right divisions and so on. So the three months... Didn't just, you know, I asked somebody the other day, why not 120 days, 150, I mean, anything could have gone in the air. But the fact that you have 90 days, is at the instance of the Elections Commission, recognizing that all the systems that are being put in place, that you will be in such a position. To hold an election. To hold an election, if you have something like a snap election, if you have something like the, the, um, a no-confidence motion where you have to. And GCOM, Law and Field and them, they know that they can hold elections in three months. It is the politics that got into it. And consumed the entire And consumed process. the whole process. Right? And that happened because you had a chairman who was a collaborator. I want to believe if you had any other chairman at GCOM that I have worked with, inside the GCOM as a technician and in the political sphere, you, that would not have happened. But it is uh, Granger and Pick, um, and now you understand why he was picked to go and picked to go there, because I doubt any one of the the persons who uh, whose name are on the list, the three lists that were submitted by the opposition leader, they would have fallen into this uh, all-consuming political trap that Patterson uh, willfully and maliciously went into. But low in field, if you recall, in the early days, the technical people, the PRO, they were saying, we, could, we are ready for election. Low in field said that we have a credible list. We have a list that will be, um, uh, is good up to the 31st of April. I think he, he also said that they, they met shortly after yeah. the no confidence motion. And, and put, they, put in place, put place systems. a system and set out timelines and so ready to go. But it was the chairman who, uh, as I said, a collaborator with the government created the situation where the technicians, they could not function even though they were prepared 
to function to have any elections. For, 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 for the, since we, we began this program, Joe, we've been talking about uh, what one could, could safely describe as the lies and misinformation from the government, from the president, uh, to the ministers, to their activists, and every single person. Um, the lies about the state of the list, <clears throat> excuse me, what needs to be done with the list um, to sanitize, uh, for want of a better term, or to, to update the list. They're all lies, aimed at mis misinforming uh, voters and to give the impression that young people are going to be disenfranchised in large measures, in large numbers. And um, I think young people are smarter and they recognize the fact that, you know what, these guys are trying to fool us. Um, because we would have been the, um, the registration centers, we would have gotten ourselves registered. Um, and we don't need to go out there and support this, this, this lie, this illegality, and so forth. And I think it, that by itself impacted um, the type of protest activity that they had today. Yeah. You know, um, you, you're still being generous to say 100 persons. Um, I'm hearing it's. If, if it was 70, no. it was a lot. No, I, I, I want to really let them enjoy the, um, the moment. You know, I give them a figure. <laughs> 100 is a nice wrong figure. <laughs> but I, I want to bring you, Joe, um, for us to have a little bit of a discussion of what we're proposing um, at the level of the People's Progressive Party Civic, what we think. And what we're proposing is not something that the PPP would have plucked out of the air uh, just like that. And again, I want to go back to the the legal officer at GCOM, the advice that she would have given to the commission, how the list can be updated quite easily in a very, very short period, and we can be ready for elections within a three-month period. And um, it is the best and most suitable process for that will be claims and objections. The, 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 the CEO of GCOM, when he was questioned in the early days, he said that the list is credible, first point. The list was good and was used for local government elections. Whilst the list for local government elections is not similar in large measure, uh, like the national elections, because some areas are not NDC areas. But what he was saying, what we utilize, as, that was a subset of what can be considered the, the national, the list to all national elections. It's credible. It, ex, it, the expiration date at the time was uh, April 31st. And he said. April 30th. Uh, April 30th. It, yes, April 30th. He said, um, all we have to do is to go there and have. A claims and objections period for about 28 days. As the chief elections officer said that. That this list can be sanitized. And his word, not mine. He said the list can be sanitized. Because you're coming out of you, you are a list that is good, it's credible. That is not a problem. All you have to do is to allow for claims and objections. So that properly people who might not have been registered can have themselves registered. People who might have moved since last elections or even since last local government election can properly have themselves placed in their correct division. And people who would have died since, they can be expunged the, uh, from the list depending on. At no time, the chief elections officer, after the no confidence motion, mentioned our social registration. The first conversation about house registration that came out of GCOM, came out of Alexander, Alexander. and uh, about. Not Mr. Lowenfield, not the PRO. The PRO position was GCOM is ready to fulfill its mandate. So the technical people, based on everything they know, and the point you raise, the, 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 the legal officer, she also recognized the processes that must be not one of these persons ever mention anything about the need for house house registration for us to have a credible list. 
The conversation about credible lists via our source registration is a political conversation. And it is the politicians who have been spewed, even up to this moment. Even up to this moment, Eddie, I have not heard the chief elections officer, the man who has statutory responsibility to run this election to announce the results. I have not heard him say that, listen, I can only have a credible list for elections via outsource registration. He has not said that. The political appointees, the are, political the one, appointees are the one said. talking. They have said that. And uh, now it has become more outlandish. And um, as I said, I'm told the new um, conversation is, watch, forget about all the things we were arguing. We're now arguing for new registration because the list that they said was good, it has expired. That is the new conversation coming out of the PLC uh, uh, but, but circle. Two things quickly, because I think we are almost out of time, um, Joe. One is that, <clears throat> excuse me, I just, want to, I just want to explain a little bit so that persons can understand how claims and objections can cleanse, and I want to use that word guardedly because the list is not dirty really, but it can update the list. Let me, let me use yes, the, the word update. Update the list is during claims and objections, you can do three critical things that are necessary for the holding of any elections. One is to allow for persons who would have attained the age of 18 to make a claim to get on the list if they're not on the list. So you, for some reason or the other, you're not registered, you're not on the list, you can go and make a claim during the claims and objections period to get onto the list. You can also use that opportunity if you moved, let's say, from Georgetown, from Kitty, and you're now living in Parfait Harmony, or you're living in Linden, you can use that opportunity during the claims and objections to do a transfer. To move to from one PCU one, to the other. To the other. Yeah. You can use the opportunity if you're married and you want to change your name. Yes. You, you can uh, name changes and so on. You can also, during that period, and that is why the name of it, the, 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 the exercise itself, um, is self-explanatory to some objections. objections. The objections, you can go and you can make an objection to a name that is on the list that isn't supposed to be on the list for whatever reason. Um, mainly as a result of the person um, dying or so. The person is dead, the name should not be on the list. So you make an objection, you produce the death certificate uh, or whatever other do documents are necessary. So once you remove the names of the dead persons, once persons who would have moved transferred, and once those who are of voting age, 18 years, make a claim and get onto the list, then... You, you don't have, have a, a credible list. What house-to-house yeah. house registration does is really help to create the NRR, which yeah. is persons who are 14 yeah. years and above to get onto the list. Yeah. Persons who are 14 years, even if the elections are to be held next year, and you get the persons who are 14 years onto the list now, they still can't vote. Yeah. So it's not a necessary exercise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, is this conversation about you're going to be disenfranchising um, youths? Uh, that's the point, <laughs> you know. You're saying that you're going to this, and you need house to house registration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the, by the child is measures, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 and a half, and you're suggesting to them that they should be on the voters list, and we're going to disenfranchise them if you're not allowed for house. When house you have an election, <laughs> must be held within three months. <laughs> within three months. So so the the argument is so ludicrous, and I'm saying again, Eddie. I'm challenging. All the people who are speaking to this matter, about all these people who are out there to be disenfranchised, present to us, present to a media house. Go in any community and find 12 persons. I'm challenging anybody in the PNC. 12 persons, go in Restaurantville, go in Buxton, go in BV, go in Enmore. you find 12 persons who are not registered. And carry them to the media house. Who, who are 18 years. Who are 18 years. years are not, are not and, 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 and that are not ready. These so-called people who are to be disenfranchised. They don't exist. They don't exist because, Eddie, the, the thing is, there's a recognition of the importance of an ID card. 
Look at my grandson, and I, I repeat that. He became 14. No one took him to the registration center. He went to the registration center at Cherry Street and Register. You know when we knew? It is when the people come to do the checking or whatever they do at the house, because he used my address as his address. When they come to find out if this person lives here. So the point I'm making, and that, that is what you find, because the, 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 the young men and women, they understand the usefulness of an ID card, and therefore they register themselves, right? Anyone who has not registered himself is not no fault of GCOM. It is them, that person failing to register themselves. And I'm saying they have minimal amount of those persons if they exist out there. I, I think we're, what, we have just, a, just about two minutes more or so to go. But I want to say this, Joe, and this is the final thing I want to say about this whole, uh, you know, argument about house-to-house -house registration. This is mis misinformation. Somehow, the, the APN UFC is giving the impression that house-to-house -house registration automatically will get people who are 18 years to go and vote. There is no guarantee if you go to someone's house, register them, that they will go and vote. I, my personal belief is if, if you have the period of claims and objections, and if that person wants to exercise his or her franchise, deliberately, and deliberately go and register. Yeah. So the yeah. argument of people de being disenfranchised holds no water. But Eddie, as, so as I said earlier, the, all the shenanigans coming out of the PNC, and all of this here is not APNU. All of this is not AFC. All the shenanigans are PNC shenanigans. Right? All the other people are just passengers. They're just tagging along. I am making the argument, and I'm predicting that all of the shenanigans about a list is even though it is happening pre-elections, it is not for pre-elections. It is for post-election. It is for the time when Granger would have lost government via a free and fair elections so that they can come with their red herring so that they would have some red meat to give to their supporters and say, you know, we could have won. But is the list that was corrupted and the list that had all these entries that should not be there. I, I, that is my... I, Eddie, I know the, the game, the, what you call the, the, the game. You understand me? I know, and I say, say as, I, as I can. Anytime you see the PNC screaming about this, it is because they are sure everything they know all the polls they have done and all the vibes they have heard, they know that they are going into an election that they cannot win. And the evidence is there. The only time they did not scream about this is 2015 when they believed they had the opportunity to get government. And so it is a post, uh, and that is what we have to look out for. I, I think, Joe, I think uh, this is where we're going to wrap things up. And I think we've been uh, able to, you know, debunk um, the, the, the misinformation and set the record straight with regards to what is necessary in terms of updating uh, the list for the elections. And, um, you know, so I want to say to you guys who, who, who are looking at the program, uh, don't be carried away. Don't, don't, don't be fooled by the lies that are emanating from, from the government, from the AP and UAFC. Even from the righteous man. <laughs> <laughs> the lies from the righteous man. Yeah, with regards to the list and why, um, you know, the need for house-to-house for -house registration. There is no need. What we need to update the list at this point in time, uh, something that can be done within a sh very short period um, to ensure the list, every single person is captured uh, who is of voting age, is claims and objections, and that can be done in time for the elections. And even while the claims and objections uh, period is ongoing, uh, all the other activities for the elections can be done uh, mm -hmm. simultaneously. So this is where we're going to wrap things up, Joe. I think um, I want to thank you very much. I think we've Eddie, managed thank you to, for having me here. To, to clarify 
uh, and to set the record straight with uh, quite a number of issues, the misinformation that are out there. And you guys, we want to thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we're going to continue to keep you um, updated and, and provide the information that is necessary as we head into the elections. Have a good rest of the evening. Bye for now.